If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. In this module, we're now going to cover more of the Ruckus IoT Suites IoT API. And specifically now, we're going to take a look at the Rules Engine interface and how to use the Rules Engine to write to the IoT controller and then to a device out on the edge. So this is a, an extension of the read module that we covered earlier, and now we're going to focus really now on how to write. So as we look at the, the IoT controller and the architecture, we, our devices are out on the edge connected to our access points and our IoT gateways using BLE or ZigBee radio protocols. Alternatively, they could even be wired Ethernet or, or Wi-Fi. We bring the data back into the IoT controller, but that connection is, by, is, is two directional. So we can now run an application on our IoT controller in our rules engine or through the third party management uh, IoT interface to now send the commands back in the other direction from the controller to the gateway and to the device to take control and to change the state on that device. So this requires us to do a couple of extra things within the, uh, the network and within the API to allow us to take control of those devices. So the key thing is the same principles that we use for reading values from devices, we can now use to, for, to write and to format messages to write to devices. So to do that, we need to use the API, we need to know the device EUID, and we need to format correctly the structure of the message that we need uh, that will be sent to the device so that it can act on that data. So to do that, we're actually going to put all the data into what we call a JSON payload. So we need to provide the information about the command, the endpoint that we're talking to, the specific cluster that we're trying to uh, control, a command ID, which is unique to that uh, specific command. And also, if there are any parameters, then we need to provide those parameters to the uh, to the device as well so that it knows what value to go to and how long it takes to get there so basically to do that we need to look at the information and structure it correctly within the iot and within our rules engine so that the iot controller knows how to then control that device so we will need to gather some information from the iot controllers api to structure that payload correctly so we will need to find the parent command the endpoint ID, the cluster ID, the command ID, and any specific parameters that are needed for that command. In the, the live demonstration we're about to go into, we'll show you how you can find each of those fields, what they are, how they're structured, and then we'll show you an example of how you can actually use those uh, in a live environment. So here we have our uh, read flow that we uh, wrote earlier in an earlier module. So what we're going to do now is we're going to extend this to now write to our light bulb. So again, as before, we have our read capabilities function where we can query the controller and get a list of all devices. So I've added a new light bulb sensor, which is a Zigbee device into the IoT controller. And if I query the, uh, the controller, you can see that we have three devices listed. So we have our vape sensor, we have our door sensor and now we have our additional light bulb which is uh, which has been configured so we can see this is listed as an extended color light we on zigbee so we get, again as before we get our device euid and we will put that into our flow here now uh, to query the controller for all of the attributes associated with that uh, with that light bulb and with that uh, device euid so again we'll save that we will deploy and we will clear and we can again, can we can inject that and now get all the information about that one specific device and sensor. So as before, we now have our device capabilities list. We can see we're at endpoint one because they have the number one here. We have a list of all of our clusters. Now here, because this is a light bulb, this has a different set of clusters to the previous example. So we still have our cluster zero, which is our basic cluster. We have our cluster three, which is our identify cluster. And But now we have some additional clusters that weren't in the last device. So we have cluster six, which is our on off cluster. And we have cluster three zero zero, which is our color cluster. So with these two clusters now, we can start doing more interesting things with the device. So for example, if we take our on-off cluster 06, 
Um, we can see this is our ZCL on off, which is our parent command cluster information. Now we have our attributes, which tell us everything that's going on with the device, but we also have our commands. And our commands can be used to send requests to this cluster to turn the device on and off. So if we open our commands, we'll see that we have a number of different commands options available to us. So command 00 is a, uh, a command that allows us to turn the device on. And command 01 is a command that allows us to turn the device off. And there's also in here a command 02 for this particular device, which allows us to toggle the state of the device. So very simply, we have any combination of these commands, 0, 1, 2, or 3, will turn the device on, off, or to toggle the condition. In addition to the commands, we also might have some parameters associated with that command. So for example, if we take our on, you can see we have this parameters list, which is which is an array of zero. So there are this particular command has no entries uh, available or no parameters that you can send to it. So it's a very simple command on or off. So what we're now going to do is actually configure our flow to take advantage of this. So what we'll do is we'll take an inject node again, a function node and an HTTP request. And we will use these together now to tie into our flow to turn our light bulb on or off. So we'll use an injector standard timestamp as before. We will now create our function node where we are going to inject or write our code. So again, we'll take our code. We will get the IoT access token from our variables, which is listed here. We have our uh, server IP address again, which is a variable. And then we are going to format our message. So we're going to send to the IoT controller's IP address, the API function app v1 device, the device URL, which is going to be along with the device EUID of C830. And then we're going to send a ZCL capability command to the IoT controller. We're going to set up our authorization. And then the last thing we need to do is actually set up the message that we want to send to the device to switch it on through the IoT controller. So we need to set up a few extra parameters now, and we set those in the payload. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the ZCL on off parent command. So as we did earlier, as we could see within the command structure, we have our ZCL on off as our parent command. Our endpoint ID is one. So as we identified up here, cluster ID is six because that is our on off clusters. So we'll open our one again. You can see our cluster ID of six for our on off. And our command ID is zero zero. So our command ID is zero zero, which as I mentioned before, is to turn the light on. And then our parameters, which are uh, zero. So if I take our cluster six and our command ID of zero zero, and then we want to send our parameters. We're just leave, there's no ent entries or values for parameters, so we're just going to leave that as an empty structure. So that should be everything that we need to do to to send to the controller for the to tell the controller to turn that light bulb on. So with our uh, function now set, we can now configure our uh, HTTP request to the controller. So unlike before, where we used the, the get command to to read information from the controller we now need to set the the method of communication to be a put command so we need to put the information now into the iot controller we also need to set up our ssl configuration and we also we need to set up our json parsed object so now with our message we're now basically telling us to turn on the light bulb through the api and we're going to post that into the or put that into the iot controller using the api function so we can go ahead now and deploy that uh, that flow and uh, we have a camera you can see on the light bulb so if we inject the node now that will format the message and send it to the controller and you can see that as soon as I inject that message that the uh, the uh, IoT controller tells the gateway on the access point to switch on that particular light bulb so that works for setting the device on now we can do exactly the same thing now by modifying the command and actually now just changing one attribute from a zero to a one and now we can now write to the IoT controller 
and we can now switch the light bulb off. So now we have an on command and now we have an off command. So again, I'll switch the light bulb off and you can see the light goes off immediately within the uh, within the, uh, the light bulb. So very simply now we can uh, just using one or two commands and we can change these values in the payload by based on an input from somewhere else in the flow. So now we can turn the light bulb off and we can uh, we can confirm that the uh, the device is off. So what we now need to do is to is expand that now and we could do some additional capabilities. So as before, we can actually look at the device capabilities in our message from the IoT controller. And again, we can see that if we expand out and we look into our clusters, we have a cluster 300, which is our color cluster. And we actually have a number of commands that we can send. So in here, we have a, a cluster and a command seven, which is move to color. So within the, the flow now, we're able to use a similar approach that we took to turn the device on and off now to actually change the, its color. So we can just by modifying our code and writing to a different cluster, a different command and a sub command, we're able to now change the, the color to a different color. Now, in here, we can see that there are some additional parameters that we need to take into account. So there is a color X, a color Y, and a transition time, which is based on a, a, a standard way of translating X, Y luminance into color uh, within, the, uh, within the, uh, the color space. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these parameters now as extra options within our message so that we can change the device uh, and set up and change the color after we've turned it on. So we'll get our inject node, we'll get our function node, we'll copy our post or our, our put node. And you can see that this is now set up to be a put. So what we'll do is we will put our code in here now and with a slightly different format. So again, what we'll do is paste our code in. So we have our standard initialization where we get the token, we get the IP address and we format our message to write to the specific light bulb device with our extension ZCL capability. But now in our payload, we're actually going to format a slightly different message. So our parent command is ZCL color control, which we can see up here. We have an endpoint ID of one. We have our cluster ID of 300 and our command ID of seven to move to color. And then we have our extra parameters now for our color X and our color Y. And the values here I've chosen will should give me a red LED indication. So that should be everything we need to set up and configure. So we'll deploy our, our message, we'll clear our log and we'll turn our light bulb on. So there we go, our light bulbs come on and now we can inject our move to color commands to make that LED move to color red. So very simply, you can see that by just one or two commands, which are all using a similar structure and how to extract the relevant endpoint attributes and cluster IDs, along with the command IDs and parameters, we're able to send a command very easily to the IoT controller to switch a device on and off and also then to change its color. And in the same way, we can use other, other values and other attributes within the command list to also now change uh, brightness, to change the hue, to change the color temperature. These are all available as different, uh, different clusters and different values within our IoT controller interface and within the, uh, the API within the IoT controller. So that completes an example of how we can easily use the Ruckus IoT controllers API to now write to devices and we can actually now take that a lot further and start connecting input devices to output devices. So for example, we could have a door contact, then trigger a light bulb to come on and off, or we can do more advanced functions and have uh, other external influences, actions, timers, devices, trigger events that then are either outputting to a light bulb device or even an audio sounder or any other third party interface. Mm -hmm.